I'm Ryan Lochte, the old man, because this is my birthday today, and this is Deck Pass Live. And it is Ryan Lochte's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, Ryan! We love you! <laughs> 35 years old. He what? is definitely the old man. Shut the front door. He is not 35. <laughs> he is. He doesn't look it. I know. Not a day over 29. No. All right. You're watching Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. I'm Jeff Cummings. And I am Amy Van Dyke. And obviously so excited that it is Ryan Lochte's birthday. So happy birthday to him. He is back. He is swimming. And it's fun to see his face again on the pool deck. Unfortunately, not swimming today. It would have been right. great to have a birthday swim. No, 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 no. You can't do that on your birthday. you got to chill it out. right? you got to have, like, the room service. In Amy's world, you'd have a little bit of orange juice. You'd have some coffee. And then you would have some blueberry waffles. Yes, I Ryan, think that's the way to go. blueberry waffles. Whatever he wants on his birthday. He's 35. He deserves it. If he wants me to come up, you know, and say hi and sing to him, I'd be more than willing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So let me know, Ryan. Any entertainment, we're willing to do it. Hit me up. Speaking of entertainment. <laughs> Speaking of entertainment, we got someone who's always entertaining on Deck Pass Live. Let's bring in our first guest, Elizabeth Beisel. What? Who? I love you. <laughs> so Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. It's a thrill like, to have you here. Oh, stop. Stop it. You guys have been crushing it all week. Well, they, so have you. So have you on taper you know, time. I've been busy. Uh, right? It's one of my first gigs, so. You've been crushing Stand people you. with. I'm trying to be like you guys one day. Well, you've been crushing people with water balloons. That too. Yeah. Right? Well, well I, was, I was innocent. I was just in the line of fire. I blame Colin for all the shenanigans. Yeah, I wish yep. I had been there to see the, the the end of the show with all the water balloons coming oh, at everybody. What you saw off camera was way worse than what you saw on camera. <laughs> it was like a duel afterwards with all the balloons. Because we wouldn't let them go to work. Yeah. Right? Of course, no, you know what no, I mean? No. No. That's not good. That's no. not environmentally conscious. Of right. We, yeah. 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 We are not wasteful people. If you're gonna use, Thank if you're you. gonna yeah. fill the water balloons, you gotta use the water. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, right. yeah. I love it. It is Bring California. California. Yeah. <laughs> <Jade> length. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you, you know this pool well. You've saw here before. Yeah. You were here 2011 Nationals, yeah. right after swimming at World Championships. So you know what some of these these men and women are like coming in here a little dazed and confused. Not knowing where you actually are, yeah. your body is like, what time zone am I in? Because we had world championships back in 2011. Yeah. God, that makes me feel old. No. That was eight what? years ago. Girl, I was in the 90s. Let's not yeah, talk about know, old. Let's not talk about no, that. Girl. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but I, I remember we were in Shanghai, flew straight from Shanghai to here, swam a full meet here, and then of course being a Greg Troy swimmer. Yeah. Naturally, we don't take breaks. No breaks. So we went straight from here to a training camp at Colorado Springs. Oh, goodness. And that was like the start of our 2012 Olympic training cycle. So I was very tired. I remember I remember sitting on this grass right behind us. Yeah. I had the two fly for a free double. Oh, and no. I swam the prelim of it. And I don't think Coach Troy was very happy with my turn or fly. And I literally started bawling. I was oh. like, I can't do this. <laughs> of course, being very dramatic with it. But... These swimmers that are here, I have so much respect for them. Yeah. Coming straight off a of world championship, so and from what I've heard, it, it was a village meet. You know, the food wasn't familiar to them. Yeah, very uncomfortable environment. Super, yeah. super humid, very hot. So, mm. for them to be able to leave that meet, that wasn't maybe the ideal scenario for them. Right. And come here and be tough and racing, like Kelsey Dahlia, Allison Schmidt, all these people coming back and racing. And they're racing great, amazing. Yeah. Right. You know, Schmidty dropping two yeah. seconds yeah. from what she went in Korea. Right. Um, it, it's just, I know how they feel, and I'm glad that I don't feel that anymore. Yeah, they're having out-of-body you know? experiences, I think. Right, right. And, and yeah. I know a lot of them were having stomach problems. Like oh. when Schmitty first got here on day one, Yeah, I think it was the adjustment from eating, like, literally packaged foods yeah. and right. rice to, oh, welcome back to America, like, fruits, veggies, whatever, and her stomach was not right. Oh, And no. I think everybody was dealing with that a little right. bit. So on top of the time change and all of that, it, it's been a lot for them. Elizabeth, I want to take yeah. you a flashback, girl, okay? You were just talking about when you were sitting over here on the grass. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at young Elizabeth Beisel Baby right there. Baby Look at you. That's when I met you. You were that young. Can oh you believe gosh. that? <gasps> and here you are. This is, like, footage from your forward I am. Yeah, talk us through this a little bit. Like, what do you think and feel? Look at me go I am so fit look at that backstroke yeah. <laughs> see I think about that now and for me back then that was just what I knew yeah, yeah. you yeah, know yeah, yeah. I, I, I came to nationals after worlds and I didn't think anything of it right and now I look at these swimmers doing it now and I'm like oh god 
how are you how? racing right now? You just uh -huh. came from Korea. And I'm like, wait, I used to do that. Yeah. But right. I mean, for all three of us, that, that was normal. It's what you we just, did. You just course. did it. And so for me, having that now outside oh. perspective, oh, look at me. And look who's um, look right me. there next to you. Maya! Yes. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Bunny? Yeah. It is so crazy. And that was when Maya was first... That was after freshman year, and she was just coming onto the scene a little bit and more. And look at that. Look you at that did sun it again. again. Oh. oh, now, Elizabeth, sunflower. You got sunflowers, girl. Those are my favorite. Did you plant them? Do you still have them? Do you love them, I, hug them, kiss them? They, they've dried. They're in a vase. No. Oh. Well, actually, I am now getting into gardening post-swimming, right? Oh, my. And I grew cucumbers over this summer, and I'm very excited. My mom's been sending me pictures of them in our garden. Adult things. Easy yeah. there, easy there, <laughs> Natalie Coughlin. All of a sudden, yeah. you're gonna have your like your own vineyard. Oh no 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 no! I'm nowhere near Natalie Coughlin's. <laughs> nope nope. Just start with cucumbers, and we'll yeah. go from that. Okay. Because I can kill like a succulent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm I'm not that great. <laughs> well, speaking of gardening, you've got your own house now. Yes. What? Yes, and that is where the garden yeah. is. And so for me being away, I travel all the time. Yeah. And my brother travels a lot for work as well. Yeah. So whenever I need the cucumbers picked, because we don't want them to go to waste, right? right? We're not wasteful here. Well, well, of course, yes. So mom goes over and picks them. And it's it's been, I, I mean, getting a house was so exciting. It was a very adult thing. Yeah. Um, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I didn't know what French drains were. I didn't know what a split system was. And now I know all those things. And I know the cost of all of those things. You are so adulting. <laughs> I know. So, which, which leads me to, you were saying that you're gone a lot. Yeah. So what are you doing, spending your time with? What are you rocking and rolling on with? I am rocking and rolling in anything that I can get my hands Go on. I am... <laughs> So I, I've come to terms with the fact that I will never be able to work a nine to five. Right. That's just not in my blood. Right. Um, so I love being around people, doing public speaking, clinics still. Good. I love the fact that I'm able to still be in the swimming world without putting the racing suit on. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, for you guys, this is home. This is where we are our most comfortable. And I love this environment and seeing everybody. Right. But do I miss the stress no. and the pressure? No. Nobody says they do. Right. No. Who, whoever yeah. does, it, they got a little the screws loose. Yeah, screws uh. loose or they're lying. <laughs> so in, or, in addition to some of the things you were doing, you just raised $200,000 to save yeah. Natagasset Bay. Is that right? Narragansett. Narragansett yep. Bay. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. $200,000. Yeah. So I've, I've also, what I've been up to, I've gotten super into ocean conservation and that realm of things because I grew up in the ocean state of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much why I got into swimming. I got into swimming because we were going to the beach every summer. Mom and dad wanted me to be able to enjoy the beach. And obviously learning to swim is a huge part of that. And so through that and my love for swimming and my love for the ocean, there's so much thing, there's so much we can do for our ocean. And so the entire race was about fundraising money to be able to clean up the shoreline, the coast, whatever it was. Um, and it goes directly back into the ocean. So. That's become a new passion of mine. Well, yeah, someone really awesome. who runs and has her own 501c3, to hear that yeah. you raised $200,000 gives me yeah. chills. That's amazing. Yeah. You're, you are such a rock star. I mean, thank you. Yeah. But you it's guys true. are too. <laughs> I'm in good company, yeah. right? Thank like, you so yeah. cute. So how are you surviving all of this as an adult <laughs> now? Mm. <laughs> I love surviving Ooh. in the wild. Mm. Interesting. Everybody can read into it. <laughs> That's really I, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not smart. I might need to think about that one for a right, minute. Right, right. Yeah. We'll let that uh, muddle yeah. marinate. Okay. But, yeah. okay. Unfortunately, that's all I can say. Okay. Well, I want to. 400 IM was your baby. It was yes. your big event. Yes. I know you chased Katie Hoff's American record uh -huh. for many yeah. years. Give us kind of the. the when do you think that record's going to go down? Do you see anybody right now that mm -hmm. may be able to do that in the next two, three years? You know, Emma swim last night. Yeah. Yes. Blew me away. I have not seen somebody at that caliber drop five seconds right. in forever. And the fact that she's so young, that proves that she is just getting started. Right. And, it, and it reminded me of myself being, you know, I had those big, big drops at 15, 16 years old and maybe she's the future. We've got yeah. Leah Smith who can swim the 4am, Ella Easton, Madison Cox. We have so many people that I feel like are right there and there's going to be a huge breakthrough very soon. I yeah. don't know who it will be, um, but the fact that Katie Hoff's American record is still standing from 2008, yeah. that's right. That must be one of the oldest ones. I think it's the oldest. Yeah. You know, I chased right. it my entire career. Yeah. I was always with me and Maya Dorado. We were always within a few tenths, but could never get it. And that's just how amazing Katie Hoff was. And yeah. that was ele now 11 years ago. Yeah. So 
props to her for being way ahead of her time. Yeah. Still ahead of her time. Um, but I do think the 4 I am is a little bit of an open event right now. Yeah. There's not like one superstar. You know, yeah. it's not like a Reagan Smith and the Turner back or right. whatever. So I think it's going to be a very interesting event next year, and I'm really looking forward to watching it. What kind of advice do you give, like, would you give to a younger kid, like a Reagan Smith, right? I mean, she went into the meet. We kind of knew who she was. Right. All of a sudden, she's thrust into the spotlight, which happened to you. What would yeah. you say to her? You know, I was lucky enough to swim for Chuck Bachelor, and she has an amazing coach, Mike Parado. And yeah. You know, they're cut from the same cloth where, mm -hmm. yeah, you had this amazing success, but that doesn't mean you're guaranteed success next year. Right. You're going to have to keep going and putting in the work. And for me, I came onto the scene young, but Chuck never let that get to my head. Good. It was always, you always have a bigger goal, bigger goal, bigger, bigger goal. And Reagan hasn't gone to the Olympics, which is great. I mean, like yeah. two world, three world records and is not an Olympian yet. So and, and even though she has those world records, I think that Olympic dream is going to be what carries her through the next season. So I don't think we have to worry about her right. and letting that success get to her head almost, um, especially with her coach, Mike. I yeah. think they're going to do an amazing job together this year. Yeah, and you know what it's like to, to get that first Olympic birth. I mean, I remember this vividly, yeah. Yeah. seeing you come around the corner after doing that. First of all, your teammates just mob you. <laughs> yeah. That uh. was just a great memory. And yeah, you, chills. Yeah, and you just were just over the moon. I mean, you were, yeah. how old were you? 15. You were 15 years Good. old. Yeah. No, you weren't even driving yet. Yeah. No. I was a sophomore in high school. I was a baby. And yes, you were. It's, you know, that is by far my favorite moment of my swimming career. And I think every Olympian would say that. Sure. You know, like, Making your first Olympic team, that is the dream come true as we blow it. Okay, sorry. That, that is like, I mean, the Olympic medals are great, but sure. just the initial, wow. Yeah. Fully I'm agreed. an Olympian for the rest of my life. Right. And, you know, for me doing it at a young age was awesome, but I will say, re-watching my races yeah. from trials, you know, I went three times and was successful all three times, but 2008, you watch my race and I'm excited. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I made it. Oh my God, 2012, it was like, all right, I made it, you know? Yeah. 2016, I finished my 4 a.m., and it's like, yeah, relief. I'm like, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Yes, that is how your last thank one is, isn't it? God, right. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's, it, you know, you did it when in 2008, you did it in 2012. You better be able to do it in 2016. Thank you yeah. so much. And you know what I mean. Absolutely. Or otherwise, you feel like, and no one makes you feel this way, you feel like right. a failure almost, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that people don't ever realize. Yeah. Is the expectation that comes with being a multiple time Olympian yeah. or, or whatever it is whatever, yeah. that you're doing. Um, it's it's the ex outside expectation yeah. along with the self. Sometimes about, there's a lot of it in their self. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about, you had a lot of pressure as well. You were a team captain, what was that like? Honestly, being team captain saved me because in 2016, I did not have the Olympics that I wanted. Right. You know, that was like, oh, Elizabeth Beisel's last chance to win gold. That didn't happen, I got sixth. And so for me, I had to make a decision whether it was I'm going to lead this team mm -hmm. and be the captain I was elected to be, or I'm going to cry in my sorrows and feel bad for myself. And so having that, and you don't need that title to be a captain or a leader, right. but it helped me. And it helped me fulfill a role that I didn't know that I needed myself. And so for me to be able to help other people win medals was my goal at that Olympics. Yeah. It wasn't for me to win a medal. So I think being captain was honestly the best thing that happened to me. Wow. Yeah. I'm Amazing. actually I'm actually surprised you weren't voted team captain in 2008 because uh, yeah. just you, you, you yeah. seem like that person that automatically gravitates to that kind of role of yeah. being, well, the cheerleader and the, the person to kind of prop everybody else up in addition to totally. having to deal your own swims. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, every every single person on a team has a role. You'll have the Amy yeah. who's winning all the medals, no. the Michael Phelps winning all the medals. Mm -hmm. And then you might have the Elizabeth Beisel who may pick a middle, medal up or maybe two. But she's not like the superstar. And right. so for me, I understood that. But my role was going to be more so I'm going to help Amy win her medals. Even if I only get one, I'm done after day one of the meet. Yeah. What else am I going to do? Eat at the dining hall all day? No. <laughs> I'm going to like give back to my, I mean, I, I did do that. Yeah. But Why not? I'm going to give back to my teammates and help them do amazing things and make history. So it was cool to be able to play a part of that in a sort of behind the scenes role. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll tell you what, I could talk to you all day. You're yes. the most interesting <laughs> woman alive without having to, you know, have a beard. Um, right, I know. I, but but I'm, sadly, sadly, we have a time crunch. We've got to let no. you go. I know. I, I know. know. But no. we can watch you tonight on Taper Time. Yes. Right? Tune what in time? at 
Uh, well, we're at three. I don't know what time. Six thirty p.m. Eastern. Six thirty p.m. Eastern. Yes. I don't know what time zone I'm in. Yeah. I feel like I just came from Korea. Yeah. I, but yeah, we're having so much fun, and Good. we love watching you guys. So it's really nice to have you guys on deck, us out there. Yeah. And, and we're a good team, even though we're not always together. Yeah. It's been great, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thanks so much oh, for having me, guys. You, thank I you. Love you guys. It's so cute. <laughs> All right, so really great talking with Elizabeth Beisel, and we've got a lot more coming for you. We caught up with the international president of Sigma Gamma Rho about a great incentive for USA Swimming. And joining me here on the Deck Pass Live desk is the international president of the Sigma Gamma Rho sorority, Deborah Catching Smith. It's so great to see you again. Great to be here with you. I'm always glad to see someone from Sigma Gamma Rho here because it means that means you're putting on a swim clinic here. Absolutely. As we have done for now almost seven years, we make sure that we are always reaching out and impacting our communities positively when we come out to the USA Swimming Phillips 66 National Championships. Yes, yeah, so those of you who don't know, Sigma Gamma Rho has been in a great partnership with USA Swimming to get more African-American women in the water. It's a very big deal. It's a very big statistic that so many African-Americans are drowning across the United States, and we've got to get those numbers down, and you guys are doing a great job with that. Talk about the clinic that's going to be here in Palo Alto. So what we're doing today in Palo Alto is we have about 35 or 40 mm -hmm. uh, women who are going to get in the water water and learn some very cool techniques, uh, really just basic information to prevent drowning. And the, in, the whole point of this is to inspire uh, all of our participants who get in the water to move and take it even further. Sign up for swimming clinics in their communities. Spread the great news with their family members. Bring A lot of the women today have brought their children and yes. other relatives. So we want to make sure that the movement is in full effect every time to reduce drowning rates in the African-American community. And something that I was, I was thrilled to hear is that some of these ladies who learn how to swim become teachers themselves. Absolutely. We've had uh, individuals as well in the community as well as our own members who have moved on, taken swimming lessons. Some of them are now lifeguards. Some of them have participated in triathlons where they're swimming. Oh, wow. Yeah, it has really over the last seven years or so taken off, uh, spreading the great news about the drowning prevention effort uh, and making sure their own families are safe. And you've had some really good um, national team swimmers in joining you on this yes. journey with you guys. And this year you have Katie Miley, yes. an Olympic gold medalist, who's going to be there. That's going to be very exciting. You're going to yes. love her. Yes. We are so excited with the USA Swimming Partnership and to be able to bring Olympians forward to the community so they see, can feel, and touch an actual Olympian. Be inspired to look at swimming perhaps as another sport. Uh, as well as the overall health and wellness benefits of getting in the water. And just really quick, we're talking about getting more African-American women in the water. Obviously, one of the big role models for African-American women, Simone Manuel, just won a world championship title yes. last week in the 100 freestyle. I'm sure that was very exciting and inspiring for Sigma Gamma Rho to see that. Absolutely, absolutely. Again, another reinforcement of the fact that you can achieve whatever you want to with commitment, dedication, and hard work and focus. And so absolutely, we rally uh, Simone and all of her accomplishments. Well, it's great to see you again here. I, I know that all the ladies are going to be in the water today are going to be inspired, excited, and going to become lifelong swimmers. Thank you so much for the partnership with USA Swimming, Deborah, and it's great to talk to you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Oh, it was so lovely to talk to Deborah about a great organization. And as you can see right there at the Phillips 66 Nationals here at Stanford, we've got time trials going on, people trying to better their times, get faster, make teams, because we've got a really important team that is being made here at these national championships at Stanford. That's correct. And, and back on day one, we caught we we got some really really good competition for that junior world team yeah. in the 200 butterfly, including that guy Luca Orlando, who's uh. been one of the most talked about people leading into this meet, and he did not disappoint, winning his first title in the 200 fly right there at 17 years old. He looked so great through that whole entire race. I, I mean, being 17, being so young, you, I, you just don't even know what pain is. You just keep going. Yeah. Coach says to go, you go. Yeah. And I think he's going to he's gonna really turn some heads in Budapest in a few weeks, and yep. that's going to be really exciting to see. And another person who got on the podium, that lady right there, Lily Nordman, mm. who got on the podium third place in the 200 Butterfly, 200 Butterfly, second place, sorry, in the 200 Butterfly, 
Tour of Butterflies turning into a hot event for the United States. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, Reagan Smith too, right? I mean, yeah. she was right there as well. And she's just on fire with her backstroke as well. And at this meet, her butterfly. Yeah. And actually, just kind of a little trivia point, I swam with Lily's dad back in the day, Mike Nordman. Ah. And uh, it's just so much fun. So much fun with oh, him. Oh, that is so cool. We, speaking of fun, speaking we of got a guy who is all about fun, all Absolutely. about this meet, right? Because we're getting ready for the world, and we got the man. Yeah, Mitch Dalton, the National Junior Team Director. This is busy time for you. You're busy. You are every day in finals. You are getting kids that you're kind of like it's like Christmas in August right now you're giving them that little envelope that's like a Christmas gift they open it up and it says I think bound for Budapest, bound for Budapest. That, ah! that's what I'm saying, yeah. that is so exciting it must be fun for you to be able to give the kids that dream yeah it's very cool I mean the, the way the team's kind of shaping out we have some returners and some new people and uh, it's just exciting regardless of where they fall in those two categories everyone is just really excited to get it uh, it's such a fun age to work with they're just sort of dreaming and working hard and it's it's contagious so selfishly I love being around that <laughs> I remember making my first team right and you get that envelope and then you freak out because you're like I don't have a passport what happens if a kid doesn't have their passport yeah uh, fortunately I work with some really good people at USA Swimming who have been planning this for months okay, okay. and uh, we sent out some ghost teams and so far everyone has a passport okay, we're all good good, good. and uh, otherwise you get your butt to uh, a place to get it fixed pretty quickly and then we get moving <laughs> good I, I remember making my first junior national team and actually you know I didn't know that such a thing existed right. um, but I think that the culture of USA swimming now is this is the place where you want to start and get yeah. get those dreams to start percolating in your head about future things um, is that kind of the conversation you guys have with the junior team right now yeah I think one of the things that I've tried to really talk a lot to the junior team about is this is not the end this is like a great thing to make uh, but really it's just the start of your journey and really you know the, the way that they all work together these are your teammates and you know the average time that we see them from when they hit the junior team to when they retire is about 10 years so mm -hmm. these are your teammates for a decade these yeah. could be your Olympic teammates get to know each other and sort of let those relationships fuel you as you move forward well, it's relationships that you're talking about. Um, they, they start forging when they make the team. And let's go ahead and take a look. You've got a great team so far. And I know that we've got some names that we would love to show and talk about. Yeah, so we're going to start with the about. men's. I mean, we the already boys. talked about Luca, but mm -hmm. just absolutely amazing. And it, and it goes all the way down to that foreign I am with Carson Foster last night. Oh, so that's women. Sorry, that's the women right now. So we've got Lily, um, Emma Wyatt's in there, um, Amy Tang. Oh, my gosh. Just absolutely, I mean, these ladies, I remember watching them when they were probably 13, 14 years old and thinking they have talent and just to see them follow through yeah. on that, absolutely amazing. Well, you got some history in there too, Mitch, right? I mean, look at, there's a name in there that looks a little familiar for some, right? You got Bruce Gemmel's daughter there. Yeah, right? yeah, Aaron right? Gemmel. Yeah, I was like, who's she pulling out here? I know, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, you're <laughs> like, the glare on the TV. Yeah. I'd like um, to buy a vowel. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, I think the, the cool thing about selecting this team and, and going through and just looking at the times is since I've been here we haven't had on paper a, a junior team that's been this fast yeah. yeah and I mean some of these times you know you mentioned the butterfly and two flies becoming a good event a couple years ago that was one of our weakest events mm -hmm. and we really right. tried to get a good culture around people loving the stroke of butterfly and it's really cool to see you know some of the things we've been working on Russell Mark was really instrumental in helping some coaches with that but um, you know what these athletes and their coaches have done to really push forward has been great but the thing we got to keep in mind is we look really good on paper no one's won a medal yet you right know? we, we right. start from zero and we go back to work after this so and we're looking at the men's roster right there we got Luke Orlando obviously one of the highlights Carson Foster oh my goodness that 400 <laughs> IM last night was epic just a race with him and Bobby Fink just digging deep and then touching the wall to set a world junior record that's that's a confidence booster for this Team USA going to Budapest. Yeah, I, I think uh, talking to Carson after, um, I said to him, I'm, I know you wanted that record and I know you wanted to win. I'm glad you got one of the two and we left something on the table for Budapest. So uh, I don't think it was unexpected for him to go that time. I think he knows where he can improve. And uh, I, I'm really excited to have him with us in, in Budapest. How do you guys stress, how do you stress to these young kids that international experience is really you can't put a price on that what do you how do you tell them that uh well usually they're 
all need international trips when we're telling them that. So okay, that right, kind of right. helps. <laughs> and then they sort of see around and see, hey, this food's a little different. How do right. I manage that? Or mm -hmm. um, I'm in Tokyo and I can touch both sides of the walls of the room with my hands because the rooms are so small. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think when they're there, they're, they're living it, they're breathing it, they're seeing it. Uh, it puts a lot of things in perspective. Uh, you know, Reagan's a great example. We started this quad with a very small elite group, took him to Tokyo, and she went there, and one of her first races was head-to-head -head with Katinka, goes there the next year, and she's beating Katinka. So, yeah. you know, these small trips we've had internationally have been really good at just helping them cultivate those relationships and get that international experience. Awesome. Yeah, I can't, I could never forget my, I mean, we went to the junior team. This is how old I am. The Berlin Wall was still up. Whoa. We went. To, we went to Berlin, and like I think a week a week before that, the, they were announcing the wall was coming down, and we were all 15, 16 years old, wide-eyed at the fact that you know we're touching a little piece of history there. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and that's something a lot of us still talk about today. And you're talking about the relationships. Is we all look back and it's like, oh my gosh, can you remember when we were 15 and you know we broke the barrier, we went over the barrier and touched the Berlin Wall. I mean, we don't talk Crazy. about the races and who we beat yeah. and who right. you know our times. It's always about those friendships, and I think more than the fact that they may win medals in Budapest or anything like that, they're always going to remember that and I think I, I I know that's a culture you guys create and kudos to you guys for doing that yeah it's it's really I think one of the most important things about the junior team uh, the international experience is huge eventually they're gonna get that at an older age but if they don't have those relationships there as sort of their foundation keeping them calm you know you look at people like Beisel and Schmidt that have been around together forever and just sort of how that has fueled our entire team yeah um, it really does does help the entire team but those individuals as well yeah well, Mitch, thank you so much thank for joining yeah, absolutely. us. We're looking forward to seeing that roster fill out a little bit so more these next two yeah, days. Hopefully we'll be able to finalize it Yeah, soon, so. and have fun in Budapest, and I hope you maybe you get a little vacation up over there in your uh, bathroom. Cabo in October will be my break. Oh, so. that's yeah. good. Say, yeah. Four days, that'll be it, and then that's Olympics. So. Perfect, yeah. And then it's all geared in. All awesome. geared to the Olympics. Well, Mitch, thank you thank so you. much yeah, for joining thanks, us. It was awesome. Thanks for having so me. So fun. So we're talking about the young faces of USA Swimming now, and and um, you know some of these swimmers we see may be becoming multiple national champions right. by the time their careers are over. Yeah. And we got a trivia question that's kind of in that same vein. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna get to in a minute. We're gonna talk about tonight's schedule. Right. We've got a great 400 freestyles uh, lined up. Right. Allison Schmidt's in the final. <laughs> Allie McHugh who's having yes. a great meet after coming off Worlds. I'm really excited about that. So excited. But how are you going to tap what we just did here? I don't know. I have no idea. We, but we but, will do it. Yeah, we will. We don't, absolutely will. Don't and get you that mixed up. <laughs> don't get that twisted, right? Is that what the kids say? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what the kids <laughs> that say That is what now. the kids say these days. <laughs> so you definitely want to watch that tonight on the Olympic Channel. Cool. So speaking of, as I said, some of these youngsters, they're getting their first national title now. It yeah. just may continue to grow and grow in their resume. And we've had a lot of people throughout the years who have done that. They start as teenagers winning national titles, yep. and now they are legends right. in the sport. And that brings us to today's trivia uh, question. Yes. I'm interested to see what Amy thinks about this and what all of you think about it. So the question today is, which woman has won the most USA Swimming national titles? Hmm. And we got a multiple choice for you here. We're not just going to have you just randomly kind of think about it. Okay. So our, here are our choices. A, Natalie Coughlin. Ooh. She's won a lot. Yeah. B, Amy Van Dyken. Oh. She's won a lot. C, Tracy Calkins. Yeah. Oh, wow. She's yeah. She's won a lot. She has won a lot. Or D, Jed yeah. Evans. Oh, who's wow. Who's also won a lot. Won a lot. So, A, B, C, or D, mm. Natalie Coughlin, Amy Van Dyken, Tracy Calkins, or Janet Evans. Tweet at us, Amy Van Dyken or at Jeff Swim, your answer. And if you get it right, we may mention you on tonight's show. So, please go out and do that. You can Google all you want. I tried to Google the answer, and it's not really easy. I think you just kind of have to know this. Right. And I know it. Yeah. It's really fun. I love this kind of trivia. It's right. really cool. So, so you want to tune in tonight to find the answer. Find the answer, but, but let us know. Yes. At Jeff Swims, at Amy Van Dyken. Tweet us. Yes. And we'll tell you if you're right or wrong, but we won't give you the answer. And then tonight you could be famous. Yes. So tune in to us tonight, Deck Pass Live, yeah. 945, 9.45 p.m. Eastern. Before that, yep. you want to go to taper time. 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Jason Lezak, Caitlin Sandino, Cullen Jones, and our guest today, Elizabeth Beisel. They're going to have a lot of fun. I really wish I was there for yesterday for National, International Water Balloon Day. We may we may go over there and make today Water Balloon Day as well. Well, I think we do. It is also Ryan Lochte's birthday, so yes. perhaps we could celebrate by drenching the hosts of Taper Time. Yes. But it's National Watermelon Day today, oh. I think. So I think they're playing with watermelon. So I would actually like to throw a watermelon at one of those hosts. You know who will be a cool guest for International Watermelon Day is Gallagher. 
A guy yes. used to smash the watermelons. I think we're dating ourselves again. Very much so. But if tweet, just do a Google on Gallagher. Just try to find it. <gasps> right. All right. So that's going to do it for us today here on Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. We'll see you all tonight. Thank <laughs> you.